everybody, welcome to a, another session of Tony Talks right here on YouTube. Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel at I am Tony215. And please do not forget to follow me. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr. Twitter, sometimes, <laughs> and I am 2215. Today on Tony Talk, coronavirus is taking a toll on society. How we deal with each other socially. Hookups have gone down by 65%. So that means that there are a lot of dry dicks. <laughs> some unflooded booty holes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> R&B singer Tank says that he sucked the dick twice, but he's not gay. You know, you know, Tank says that he, I don't know, I guess it was, it was a friend, and he decided that he wanted to um, try sucking a dick. I mean, I don't know too many straight men that say, hey, you know, you know, you know, they wake up one day and say, you know what, I, I want to suck a dick. Let me, let me try that out. Let me see how that works for me. I don't, I don't know too many straight men that, that, that even have that thought cross their mind. Okay. <laughs> I beg to differ. You sucked a dick one time and mm, you decided you weren't gay. You decided you didn't like it. You decided that it wasn't for you, but <laughs> you went back for seconds? When you go back for seconds, that means that you liked it you'd like the dish. When my grandma likes collard greens and I go back for seconds, that means that I enjoyed it. I liked it. I loved it. Um, Tank, you're gay. I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame if he's living in a closet. I mean, this is the time, this is the age of being uh, gay. It's like, uh, it's a great time. I mean, it's not like 20, 30 years ago. Uh, we li live in a more free, more liberal, Society. I mean, there are pockets of people that are still close-minded. You know, Tank, just, just, bruh, just, just, just come out. Just come out. New report is out that scientists have discovered sucking dick <laughs> cures the coronavirus. Okay. <laughs> they write this stuff. I, I just report the news. <laughs> he used to be a total bottom. Now he wants to be a total top. He wants to top you. Can he? Oh, he used to be a total bottom. Back in the day, when he first started out in this lifestyle, he was a he was a complete bottom. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years later, he has matured and now he wants to be a top. And he wants to top you. You like him and you think he's cool. Actually, you like him a lot, but you have this rule where you don't let bottoms top you. Does the fact that He's been 10, 15, 20 years removed from being a bottom. Does that matter? Will that, you know, have an effect on your decision? You know, will you look at him differently? Former governor candidate Andrew Gillum was found with uh, two men and a uh, male prostitute. Apparently, reports say that the governor candidate on the floor, incoherent, throwing up, apparently, supposedly, allegedly, on some type of substance. Um, I doubt that it was weed. I doubt it. Um, I doubt it was alcohol. <laughs> I doubt it was even a combination of both. I think it was a little bit more than <laughs> just that. It's really sad when we have prominent black men that rise to power and they just throw it all away for one session of, I guess, hot sex. And it wouldn't be so bad if you would just be yourself, just be who you are. If Andrew Gillum had just, you know, not been married and not had the kids and just said, hey, you know, I'm a gay man and I want to run for governor because I want to make a change, hmm, that's cool. But when you come out and you say that, you know, you're this man and you're married to a woman and you have all these kids and, you're presenting to us, you know, one image and then behind the scenes there's a whole another 
Uh, there's a whole nother person. Society doesn't take that very well. You know, you would think that these guys would like learn from other people's demise. People that live these double lives, just, just, you know, the point is just, just be yourself. If you are gay, just embrace it. Just, just embrace it. If you like having wild sex sessions with drugs, <laughs> just say that, you know, but don't present yourself to society to be one way and then you turn out to be something totally different. I can understand your views and opinions changing slightly here and there, you know, from day to day through social influence and through personal experience. I was really so proud of Barack Obama when he had no scandals. I mean, like this man had no scandals whatsoever, which I thought was amazing. I really think it's so, so sad when our brothers, our brothers that are, you know, making waves in the world and, and, and you know, Mr. Guillermo came so close so close to turning Florida blue. So close. I guess the point is to any politician, anybody out there, any man that's DL, just hey, look, just be yourself. Embrace who you are and, you know, fight back what society says and what society thinks because um, society is one way. You know, society wants everybody to be cookie cutter when God did not intend for everybody to be cookie cutter because if that was the case, God wouldn't have made us all the same, but God made us all different. Well, the question is, are jock straps for tops or are they for bottoms? Mm. What would you think if a top came out in a jock strap? I know everybody has their, their own thing, but I don't know, jock strap just doesn't scream, doesn't scream top to me. I, you know, I don't know, I have my, I have my, I have my issues with jock straps. I mean, uh, I'm just saying, you know, if, to each his own, but if you're a top, I just I don't see where I just don't see where a jock strap would benefit you. Just I don't see it. I mean, aesthetically, maybe you know you're gonna take it off. But now I love jock straps on bottoms. I mean, <laughs> I think that's 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 hot. That's really hot. He likes you, but he gets off on shitting on you. Is he dateable? Would you date a man that really? got his rocks off by shitting on you. <laughs> there is a niche in society for people that actually like that. Um, there are people that actually are, they're actually into that. Like, if you met a guy and he was hot and you liked him and he had a great conversation, you know, and one day you guys got intimate and he decided hmm, to ask you if he could shit on you. <laughs> Like, what would you do? Would you find it sexy? Would you think it's a turn on? Personally, uh, I would run. Cause the next thing, I don't know if you're trying to eat me. So oh, this coronavirus is definitely taking a toll on uh, us socially. It's a difficult thing to deal with. We are really not used to being apart. I think that this coronavirus uh, epidemic really, you know, raises a lot of questions, of course, but it also shows us that uh, we are really important to each other. We all need each other. And at the end of the day, even though we all get on each other's nerves, because I know there are some people out there that get on my nerves. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all need each other. We all love each other. And social gathering is actually so important. So I really think this coronavirus thing really, really shows how important social gathering is, you know. Life is not gonna ever be the same. You know, life is gonna be altered, life is gonna be changed. What makes a basketball game? What makes a football game? What makes a hockey game? It's really the gathering of the fans, the gathering of the people. And I really think that this, 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 I don't know, experiment, you know, it's, you never know. Um, but this, this situation, this circumstance, this epidemic, if you want to call it that, I think it really, really displays how important we all are to each other and how we are all connected. So intricately detailed connected. You know, the fact that we can't gather in bars and we can't gather at, you know, basketball games, football games, concerts, uh, it's really going to take a toll on us uh, emotionally, psychologically. When life returns back to normal, just remember these days. Just remember 
this time when we could not gather and we can we could not touch each other we could not hug each other we could not embrace each other and how much you, you know not being able to do that really means when life returns to normal just make sure that we take advantage of uh, being able to give a person a hug to embrace someone <laughs> so mm, I don't know there's a brighter side. There's a brighter side to every uh, dark time. Please do not forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, all of them 2215. And please do not forget to just stay inside, be safe, take precaution. And uh, I love you. Peace. <laughs> so, mm, I don't know. Okay. <laughs>